In this episode, we're going to look at what happens when the object goes off axis. Now, just as a reminder, we have already seen what happens when the object is on the principal axis. So imagine here is our object. So here is our object. And uh, the object distance is u. Then we have seen that our image would be also on the principal axis somewhere over here. And we call that as the image distance is i. Uh, the image position is i and the image distance is v and we found that there's a connection between u and v and that connection is the question now is what's going to happen if i take my object and move it this way i'm going to move it perpendicular to the principal axis okay i'm not going to move it anywhere along and it's not going to have any component in this direction i'm only going to move it perpendicular to the principal axis the question is when i did that and imagine I moved this guy up over here and I moved him by a height h of o. What's going to happen to my image? That's the question. How is it going to move? Oh, is it going to move down? Is it going to move up? Is it going to move towards the left? Is it going to go in some other direction? What's going to happen? Well, what we can do is we can use a little bit of vector analysis or you know we don't even need vector analysis just think about this logically say I have moved the object only vertical the object has not moved along the principal axis at all if the distance of the object along the principal axis has not changed then the distance of the image along the principal axis should also be unchanged in other words the image cannot move anywhere this way the image tools should still be stuck as far as the image distance is concerned with along the principal axis along the principal axis the image position should be stuck now the image is only going to move perpendicular to the principal axis and that's what we want to find out we want to find out exactly how much does it move uh, with perpendicular to the principal axis so the good news is this formula still works it works for distances along the principal axis and that's why we derived it last time by keeping the object on the principal axis. So this time we just going to find out what's going to happen perpendicular to the principal axis. All right, so let's keep this guy somewhere at the side for a moment and then we're gonna reintroduce him back later. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna draw incident rays. Here is one incident ray and uh, here's a second incident ray. Uh, these are the same incident rays we drew last time. After reflection, they have to obey the rules of reflection. You guys know that by now. So yeah that pretty much looks okay i feel hmm. okay so the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection is almost equal to each other yeah okay there we have it and the second ray of light we'll have to make sure here the angle of incidence is exactly equal to angle of reflection yeah there we have it my image is going to be at this location and so you see something wonderful happening what you can see happening is when the object has moved upwards, the image ends up moving downwards. And that is something amazing. You don't see that in normal plane mirrors. In plane mirrors, if you jump up, you expect your image also to jump up. But in a concave mirror, if you jump up, you expect your image to actually jump down, as we are seeing. And notice that the height by which the image has moved down is not the same as the height by which the object has moved up. So the question is, by how much distance? How much is h i? Well, that's quite easy. To understand why it's so easy, let me name these points. Let me call this point as A. This point is already O. Let me call this point as B then. Okay, I want you to focus on triangle P A O. So look at triangle P A O and focus on triangle PBI, PBI. Can you see some feature that these two triangles share? The feature is they have the same angles. Look, these two angles are equal to each other. These two angles are equal to each other because they are perpendicular and this is incident angle is equal to the reflected angle. And that makes the other angle also equal to each other. That means these guys are similar triangles. Therefore, their sides must be in the same proportion. So the side I'm interested in is, is this, this side. So I'm going to take HI and divide that by HO. So these two, if you take the ratio of these two sides, that should be equal to the ratio of any other two sides. And the other two sides are 
Oh, look at that. That's just PB divided by PA and PB is the image distance and PA is the object distance. You see something wonderful. You see that the ratio of their heights is exactly equal to the ratio of their distances along the principal axis. So that's amazing. Okay, so there we have it. This is our equation. And we have to tweak that equation a little bit now. And the reason we need to tweak this equation is because we have to take care of sign conventions, which I'm going to explain in the next video in great detail. And uh, the sign convention is if you take the image and if the, if, if the, if the image or the object, if the height is below the principal axis, we have to call that as negative. And because of that, our height of the image divided by height of the object, we are building general equations over here, has to be always minus v divided by u. And this ratio is often called as the magnification. And you will see soon in the future videos why we like to call this as magnification. And the main reason, would, main reason is Although we derived the equation for a point object, now you can see, and now we will, we will see in the future episodes, that we can now use these two equations even for extended objects. Meaning, you can, ha you can imagine there is a dude standing over here, and we can actually find out where its image is going to be and how high its image is going to be just by using uh, these couple of equations. And so, I'm going to see you next time. Take care.